despite the fact that they are not the bottom of the barrel team, they have shown some very obvious weaknesses, and it's uh, elicited a lot of chatter as to how that team plays. BDS had their struggles through those two days, so when you look at this group, that could ultimately be BDS's saving grace. Not that they were a good team, but that their competition was worse. That has to be playing into their mind going into this matchup, and even more so now that it is do or die on Oregon. Certainly. I think even for the group of C, even Fur yet, they haven't showed a crazy gameplay yet. Ellen on the other hand, they kind of surprised them day one, and that's like that Apex supremacy, but enough about the groups. There is a particular match right now that matters more than anything else in this very moment. That is Oregon between TSM and Team BDS. You got the Floris off the board, followed by the Finger once again, Mira once again, and final band coming through. Could it be information base? Could it be Valkyrie? Could it be Thatcher? Could it be the Kaid? I'm not sure what I'm talking about. It cannot be the Thatcher. It's a defender band for all things. But Thatcher and or Valkyrie. It'll be the Valkyrie, of course. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Little information game on the board, but we will have a Thatcher open, which means basement defense is going to be a little bit wonky because those hatches are going to get opened each and every single round. So you gotta get active, you gotta get out there, you gotta make your way around the map and try and stall out the attackers if you're on the defense because you cannot just sit on side and wait. That surely will lead to your demise. Very first defense for TSM will go upstairs into dorms. For those of you who are not particularly well uh, versed in the way that Oregon plays out, the two most commonly used bomb sites are on the basement laundry supply room and then upstairs in kids' dorms and dorms' main hall, the double dorms bomb site. The one hallmark that this bomb site had before the rework and now also has since the rework is that there are a lot of hard walls. And when I say hard walls, I mean not a lot of destructive capability. You can open up some of the ways into the site using your hard destruction, but other than that, there's a lot of just brick and mortar that you cannot deal any damage to. There's no bullet pen, there's no way to destroy it with either soft or hard destruction. So defenders can play in certain spots where unless you are beneath them or taking a direct engagement in front of them, they are in a, a, a powerful position to rebuff you. And the team that has control of the bomb site in the final 20 seconds has a disproportionate amount of influence over the rest of the round. I know that that seems intuitive, but there are certain bomb sites where you could be in a 4v4, have site control, and lose it just because of the way the bomb site plays out. On TSM side of things, there's nothing particularly weird about their lineup. As for BDS, this is about as standard as you're gonna get. Three soft breachers in the Yana, Sledge, and Zofia. Two hard breachers in your Hibana and Maverick. I suspect that we're going to see Rafal go towards top of the tower, over on T2, put the Hibana inside of Closet, and open things up that way, but I'm open to being surprised. I was gonna say, I think we're in for a surprise because BDS going for a downstairs small tower tag, trying to work their way into dining kitchen. Might wanna go crazy in the verticality at the very least, you start consisting white stairs. But downstairs you will find Bolo, who's been in the fray against BDS a couple of times already. He said no weird picks are out, but then again, you do have Frost on the board now. No, Renji's not gonna go above. They're actually gonna stay on here. I was thinking verticality from above here would be great onto Bolo, but we're gonna go for the gunfight. Shigo, Renshi, and Lemsh, they are leading the charge together. And so far, Bolo has now slipped away to that freezer stairs. He does not want to get any of the heat coming his way. Oh, Bolo lurking on these freezer stairs. An aid goes off. It's being hunted down. 90 seconds burned from this round. The more time that BDS spend trying to fox wherever Bolo may be, the less time that they can spend on the execute. I don't know if that was an aid from below, by the way, but Chala's been dropped. Lycan on Twitter earlier talked about the amount of players who are getting killed from nades below due to the yellow ping system. He referred to them as being depth charged, and I thought that was very fitting. They'll be able to retrieve Chala, but not Bolo. Very first kill of this map goes to Alems, and that's a good start for BDS. Yeah, you can be very happy with that one. A minute left, honestly, we're looking quite all right. Remember, Chala was injured earlier, which means 20 health on him. Now, BDS will set up for that Weister's push we spoke about earlier, but the gunplay comes into this fact. And Renshiro does a bit of chip damage onto Merc, but that's not enough because Geo finds him as well. And now, back to a four versus four, but 
The help is looking a lot worse for TSM than that of BDS, but Achieved answers back. Shai goes off the board as well. Achieved right now holding armor. He's also got the ability to play towards master side, so BDS is only entry. Our big window and white stairs. A bit of a comical flop from Rafal as his body sails upwards. Alems will take his exact spot. He's got 20 seconds to move from this position. His shoulder's seen for a second. Merc knows that he's there. And it'll be up to the LM's position to do some damage. But no, nothing for him. TSM continue their reign of terror and their dominant stretches from Bank all the way over to Oregon. Actually, not that far of a distance. Fun fact, Bank located in LA. Oregon located in <clears throat> Oregon. So I don't know if you know this, but Oregon is the state directly north of California. So it's, uh, I, mean, I, I didn't go from know bank, where bank was, actually. Yeah, that was yeah, a new one to me. You pick up your talents. You pick up your equipment. You go from L.A. up to Oregon. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite a it's long realistic. drive. It's realistic. It's probably going to take you about 10 hours to get there from L.A. Sure. Maybe a little bit longer than that, depending on where in Oregon it is. I digress. TSM continue to do well. I don't know. I don't know if it was the roam that particularly got under BDS's skin, but they did spend an awful lot of time trying to find the players from TSM who were not on site. I'm not going to lie, Parker. I thought for a brief moment there was a basement roam because of how spread out TSM were with Bolo instead of servers, and then halfway through I was like, you know what? I am so wrong. It is indeed upstairs because now we are down below. I do think the roam was great from TSM. I think Bolo played it quite smart. He got early aggression, killed a few drones, and then ran away through these stairs. And then we kind of saw what happened. BDS, they got the opening kill in Lemsh himself. And the early game was great from BDS with the mid round and the late round. They didn't really progress a whole lot. They only had the wide stairs. They only had the big window entry, they needed more. You said earlier that typically you want to go for that master bedroom balcony approach or big tower breach into attic and those make a lot of sense because you're guaranteed map control, you're guaranteed ground to work with and sometimes the simple way actually is just the best. So that's what we call defaults in Rainbow Six Siege, that's the strat that you most commonly see both in the attack and the defense and so far not a default version from BDS but this looks more common. They're gonna be on the back side of things, trying to work the big tower. But BDS, or sorry, TSM, they are trying to hold the ground, trying to deny entry. And Lemsh going tier three, going to be rappling in and making sure that nobody's creeping around up top. And the chief says, you know what, you can have this ground, but I will try and take at least one drone with me. In terms of drones, there have only been three killed from BDS. This is something that you can watch yourself in the top portion of the overlay. Door smashed open, and damage is done to Rafal, finished off by Bolo, who's still playing by meeting. He's got the hatches opened up, as well as the one above him in Attic that he can watch, and that very small angle allows him to hit ahead if somebody peeks from the top of Attic over by T2. Bolo has not been shaken off this position, playing by Sandbag, staring towards the door leading into stage. If there's anybody who's mechanically gifted enough on TSM to hold this, it's definitely Bolo. And if BDS do not drone this out, there is a Mute Jammer not too far off. If they do not drone this out, Bolo can potentially net a second kill and continue to waste crucial time that BDS needs. We're at the halfway point of this round. A grenade goes off to deal some damage to Achieved as BDS have now taken Attic, and they might be able to drop. Where is Bolo down below? That is the question. Still has Mute Jammers and a Malusi Banshee not too far off. He has vacated meeting and headed over to Split to sit and wait. The staircase down to Laundry Supply is not too far off, and in a moment's notice, he can rejoin his team on the bottom floor. Yeah, and note that Merc's been helping out Bolo the entire time, was inside of Attic, holding his hatch vertically earlier, and now inside of Kitchen. Bolo's still sitting inside of Flag Meeting, so at any given moment, he could swing and take his gunfight. BDS, they know the whereabouts somewhat, but here we go. They haven't joined out Bolo yet. Creeping down this hatch is a lemish, but... Cover your ears! It does not stun Bolo, so Bolo could still creep up. We don't know exactly what's going to be happening, but Bolo swings stupid. No! This is so fast! He reads it, drops down the hash, gets traded back by Achieved. But now in the four versus two. So much of this action happening by Pillar, by the way. And there's nothing they can really do about it. All of BDS falling by the wayside. What a drubbing TSM is putting on this team. They're up 2 nothing, and they're making it look mighty easy, Nick. Yeah. Just gonna say. BDS, they got the halfway point, right? They got the big tower. They got the attic. They got... This tower stairs the basement themselves and they got meeting, but they never joined flag. 
the Neverjoin kitchen, a lemsh. He had the stuns, he could have checked with the gadget, chose not to, and I would have thought it would have punished him, but he was so quick with the LMG, took down Bolo himself, but ultimately it didn't matter. TSM is much more than just a single member, even though they are called Team Solo Mid. There are no lanes in this game, that name originates from League of Legends, where you have top lane, mid lane, bot lane. In this game, we just have five pew pewers essentially, put on different roles such as flex, support, you know, flank watch, entry, etc. So that won't really translate. We're now going to be heading to the meeting kitchen bomb site. There's two options here. There's the kitchen dining and there's Attack kitchen the meeting. I would argue that it invited, at least from what I've seen, we've seen this bomb site more so than the dining one. And it ha it's had mixed success. I think it's kind of hard to hold as a defender. But typically, of course, if you can win your gunfights or aggress correctly, you can always favor the numbers on your side. And so far, TSM, they've been doing pretty good work with those opening kills. So playing four versus five on this bomb set in particular will definitely help out your team. Me, oh my, what a start from TSM. So with the two most popular bomb sites, the ones that we talked about back in round number one, that forces TSM to go somewhere else. And where do they go? Well, they go to kitchen and they go to meeting. It's technically one big bomb site carved up in two. The kitchen bomb site remains for both of the first floor bomb sites, but the other bomb will either be in meeting or over in mess hall slash cafeteria. A lot of teams will favor an extension into meeting, and whether you look at a Latam team or an EU team, which might like the mess hall portion, it's more common for NA to take meeting. It allows them to extend out, play upstairs, they will not cede control of the dorms component for quite a while, and as you can see riding along with Bolo, that is exactly where the focus for TSM lies. They want to play off of this as long as humanly possible. Multiple ADSs will protect the deployable shield that is in front of Bolo. It's not just a shield, though. It has the gas canister attached to it, so if it goes off, the damage being done will be staggering. Nitro Cell goes out, but it does not hit its target. He's just a little bit too far off. Brida a flash again, attempting to burn those ADSs, but the ADS will be juggled, and it doesn't hit in time. That is a crucial blow to TSM, but they've killed 90 seconds worth of the clock in the process. It's a nice try, and those shields, those canisters, Vulcan shields. They're a bit special, but about the same. Shield is gone nonetheless, and now BDS, they have to find their way through so far because TSM, they're standing their ground. Nade injures Bolo, but I don't think BDS knows just yet, so they still have the fear that there's a man advantage here inside of TSM because they have three guns in their face. But now Shago makes his way through. Here's the drop. Doesn't swing just yet, but the timing is in no! Somehow Dio gets the kill Excuse me! What on earth was that, Nick? How do you have that happen? The drone goes by and finally sees Mark. He swings out. One to the chest. Down Alems goes. Finally finished off by Rafal. Trying to keep these numbers even. But TSM's only casualty is Merc far off the site. The grenade goes out, does not connect on T'Challa. Drones being shot on in, having to police what is above him. All that damage that had been done by BDS on the top floor, but the bomb site is still here on the first. Rafal working away at the wall. Who holds the diffuser? Brida does. And where is he in terms of the execute? Above. So he needs to get to the bomb site. 35 seconds for him to do that. The good news for BDS is that both Geo and Bolo are a single bullet away from death. And with the aim that BDS has, they can make it happen quite easily. One of only two players from TSM at full HP. That was achieved. He's as good as dead. A beautiful shot from BDS. But Geo re-aggressing, coming back to the bomb site through the freezer stairs. He'll claim another kill for his team. Brede with that diffuser in hand, as we noted. He has to drop. Chala will hear this, but he doesn't move a muscle. He doesn't know where he is. From the back, Brede takes him down, but then is immediately traded out. They just need to waste on time, and that's exactly what they'll do. Rafal cannot hit F fast enough. And let's pay some respects by hitting F of our own in the chat. It's 3-0 for TSM. Unlucky for Rafal, honestly. He might have had a tiny chance there. Bolo was quite far away, running away, understanding time was slipping away for BDS. And again, extremely uncharacteristic characteristic for the likes of Shaiku. He ran into Attic as Gio was reviving Bolo and somehow, someway, Bolo was, or sorry, no, Gio was just better. Bolo was on the ground, but did get revived in the end. Bride, nice try, entry onto side, get 
did get a final kill of his own, but it wasn't enough. And now we're gonna go back upstairs to Kid Storms. Geo six in the castle. TSM love playing the utility Defense. game. And BDS, Defense. honestly, last round despite losing, did do quite a good job at clearing TSM's utility. It just came down to a few gunfights that didn't go in their favor. Well, that's a perfect rotation by TSM. Mind you, this is BDS's map. TSM chose the side. I do believe that we are looking at a defender side in Oregon with the operator bands and the way that it is being played out. So BDS will almost certainly make up ground on the second half. With TSM winning the first three rounds in a row, it means that it is impossible for the French squad to win the first half. At best, they can win the next three, tie it up at three apiece, and go into the second half seemingly with the wind at their backs, given that they will be on the more advantageous side. That's my speculation, though, and I am happy to be proven wrong. I've been wrong before. I will have be you? wrong again. I have been. I am not perfect. Far from it. So, that said, TSM have done bare minimum at the moment. Take three of these rounds, ensure that BDS on their map, their comfort pick, are not able to take a numbers advantage in terms of rounds. This is a great start here in round number four. Nick as Alems picks off Bolo very early on. I don't know if Bolo was simply crossing through the window or was spawn peeking. Either way, he's gone. And he'll be back in two minutes and 30 seconds when round number five begins. Bolo might have tried to be a little bit cheeky there. I could ex I could at least see like a jump out happening, but we won't know for sure. Either way, Alems, good job on him opening up the round, getting that opening kill, but now need to convert that into an actual round victory. So he gotta really utilize the fact that there's one less gun on the side of TSM, and it's Bolo of all people who's off the board. He's looked really, really lethal on bank. He's looked quite all right so far in Oregon. BDS going for a more common attack that's default, as we spoke about earlier, going onto Master Balcony and working their way through. But what's not quite normal is that TSM hasn't reinforced both walls inside of Generator. They've actually kept one soft and made a rotate, which means that BDS, they don't need to worry about breaching the wall necessarily because it's already open. Merc sitting tight inside of Attic, but now Shag will be moving up. Might see a gunfight happening. TSM playing multiple angles towards BDS. They're not going to have a lot of safe ground here. Even the satellite window is castle barricaded off, so you're really limited in where you can go if you're BDS. That grenade does Ooh. not work. That is a blunder, but still the guns from BDS are hitting their marks, and that's what truly counts. Sometimes brute force is a perfectly viable strategy. You don't have a grenade in your hand, but you do have access to a blowtorch, and BDS are beating the ever-living stuffing out of TSM on this round. Seemingly, TSM unwitted and just not being aware of where BDS is coming from. A flawless round is shaping up. Chala might be the only one. Alem's on in, and there you go. It is indeed a flawless round. The down on the top of White Stairs is down, but not out. And that last part, but not out, particularly critical. If a comeback is brewing, BDS needs to start sooner rather than later, and they'll take that round. Headset down, that means it's a tactical pause. A timeout has been called, and they will be allowed to speak with the team, or at least that's what it looked like. Yeah. I don't know if that's what's going to happen because, well, they're in the middle of the round and the clock is still going. I think we're just going to continue I, on, on. I guess so. It's a confusing thing unless BIOS just keeps the headset down on his <laughs> own. Usually you have to flip it up. That could just be confusion on our end. Yeah, I think there's usually a button they have where they can kind of like mute, unmute and the app and has to ensure that that button is of course turned the right way. And we do have admins here inside monitoring that no one is cheating or breaking the rules or talking to your team unbeknowing to the admin. So don't fear about that. Even if the microphone was down from BIOS, I am sure that he is only able to speak when allowed to, if you will. Last round, LM did find the frost trap. It happens, but if that was a five versus one, we set to a five versus zero. As you said, Parker, down but not out. Flawless round for BDS. Opening kill as well. And they really checked every single mark there. But now, gotta try and do the same thing on a basement attack. Something that earlier did not go in their favor as TSM picked up that round as well as the opening kill previously. Nothing out of the ordinary from either side. Standard orbiter lineup. Basically, they're suitable to attack any kind of bomb site from the side of BDS. They got the grenades, they got the flashbangs, they got the soft breach, etc. They even got the verticality from Renshi on that sledge. Bolo, of course, roaming on the staircase. So is Achieved and Geo up above. We see his silhouette right now. 
Every single member besides Chala is actually trying to find a drone, and there it is, with only six left from BDS. We're gonna have a little bit more limited information this time around. Two more attempts for TSM to take this half. As stated again, BDS cannot outright win the first half. And that might actually be okay. If you think that defense is the favorite side and you hold TSM to just three rounds, that in and of itself could be a massive victory, even if you draw in terms of rounds one. Attackers have located a Absolutely. Setup looks pretty ordinary for TSM. They have lots of denial. Aruni Gates, Jaeger ADSs, Wamai Magnets, all will eat up some of these throwables, which the oh. intended focus of that will be to keep these deployable shields alive, of which there are two present from the Goyo alone. Another added from the smoke equals three shields. Yep, look at the pixels from Bolo there, trying to get cheeky. I've never seen that angle before actually myself, and that might just work in their favor because they need some sort of thing going here. BDS did really good work of clearing out the map despite having almost no drones alive. With a minute and 30 seconds left, four drones is all you got. And of course, the Gemini clone from Shaiko. But outside of that, it all comes down to this. BDS are now looking to where to sit up on the map. Right now, they have players in every single area. Freezer stairs, meeting hatch, big tower stairs, and Bride moving towards the lobby stairs with Rafael as well. So, TSM, they have to be guessing where does the danger come from. This is the second time that we've seen BDS expertly cut through the defense and the ADS and shield play of TSM. I'd even go so far as to say this is the third round where I've seen BDS do a remarkably strong job of finding the weaknesses and the lack of areas where those ADSs or magnets will cover. Now, as you said, BDS are spread out all over the map. 45 seconds means that it's the perfect time for them to hop on in. They'll be greeted by one toxic canister. There's still one remaining from Chala, but he's gonna have to hold on to it because there's still 40 seconds. This is an ideal. He's keeping the last player at bay, the Zofia right now, of Alem stuck inside of blue. He'll wait this out. Elbow has not been forfeited just yet, still being held on to by this position. Geo hears the body coming down the stairs, and it's an easy pick for him. A reload with only 16 bullets, and he'll look to swing. Capitalizing, played out beautifully, leaving Rafal to try and prevent a flawless round. He'll do that. But 15 seconds and four kills to find seems like a hopeless endeavor. Taking into the bomb site another for him. Two kills is all he'll get. And the first half will at least go for BDS if they do not prevail. But they want to get the victory, and at minimum, they want to push to a third map, denying TSM the full points and getting a single point for themselves. At the present moment, after the absolute hurt that TSM put on BDS back on Bank, and now with the scoreline being what it is, it certainly doesn't look like BDS have settled into Rafal being back on this roster. It's frankly a bit disappointing because many players are very high on BDS, many of the fans are very high on BDS, and time and time again, BDS proved to be the kings of Europe, but they can just seemingly not put it together when it comes to LAN. I don't know what it is with the team. Obviously, these are very different circumstances from before, but still falling below their expectations. Yeah, BDS is often spoken of as the absolute best team to ever touch Rainbow Six Siege, who's never won an international event of any kind. And that to me is absolutely wild. Remember, they are up against a TSM that's quite on fire. They had their game yesterday against Furia. It was spoiler alert. Dot, 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 dot. A 2 0 victory for TSM. 7 5 on Villa. 8 6 on Pop House. So just scraping through. But it did look like a, I would say, decent TSM and a decent Furia playing. But today against BDS, I would say this is a great TSM playing and about a average BDS form, I would say. And of course, this is what might happen when you're playing with your coach for some rounds or some games even. And then you got Raf uh, Rafael coming in. You know, after two play days, it is hard to adjust, but I think we all expected a little bit more, but we still got rounds to go. Don't count out BDS just yet. They can be one round away from just flipping that switch. All right, well, calm before the storm, dare you say it? A knockout blow could be delivered by TSM on this round as a 5-1 split is very rare to see. Over the course of the last three days, a number of teams have put a 5-1 scoreline into place and their opponents have not been able to match it. And all it takes is one slip up. A 4-2 half for your opponents seems normal. But against a 5-2, that means that seven rounds go in favor of the one team who then end up winning. Yep. Chala is going to take a lot of fire right now. He got that softball into tier one of Big Tower. 
But he's looking to get active. Shago says no, 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 no. That's the first kill for Shago. He's not on the board. Remember, that switch can flip at any moment. And right now, we have all members of BDS activated on the scoreboard. Renshi looking to maybe destroy this softball, allowing the injury for BDS. But first, Shago is going to try and take more control, but achieved on the flank. This could be dire for Team BDS. And that's the real Shaiko in the middle of the site, by the way, not the Gemini. At the backstage by Tower, that's the real Shaiko. So he's got the gun in hand. He can fight back. And even though he only has a single kill to his name, you know that Shaiko is always a looming threat. We'll see what the flank can happen. Achieved is their attention. And BDS have pivoted, knowing that this is the case. Gives Geo an opportunity to creep up. But he doesn't see any legs just like that. It's spotted, and he can't do enough damage, and he misses out. Geo, 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 you have to be better than that. Every day, Every day with one on to achieved. But he's downed himself, and he'll need to be picked back up. Bola low HP, that means Merc will be the savior, and he looks the wrong way, shooting into the side of the table, but no damage being done. It's a tough gunfight for him to be in. Pre day retrieved, meaning that BDS is back at full HP and full strength, except for Pre day being a little bit low. Shot out is Merc, that leaves Bolo, and he gets taken out by a Lems because they retrieved him and he never finished himself off. This is a flawless round yet again. Both times that we've seen BDS prevail on attack, they were done so flawlessly. Yep. A side swap and a definite confidence booster for this French team as they look up, look to make up for lost ground on the second half. That's gonna feel great. You get a tactical pause, you get to talk things through, get opening kill, flawless round. Bride really saved it. I thought for a moment when TSM were creeping up that Bride is gonna die for nothing. He gets not only just one, he gets two. He also gets achieved on the flank, basically saving the round from going the wrong side. And Elimsh as well, absolutely activated now. Shaiko got the first kill of Oregon. The flip has officially been, or the switch has rather officially been flipped. And now we're gonna see a side swap as BDS makes their way to the defensive side. Four two sides side switch, that is exactly what BDS wanted. And with that timeout, they could be quite happy with that as well. Bios, I'm sure, also took some time to talk about the defensive side because that's essentially where BDS has to end out the map. Unless, of course, they want to go to OT, then they'll have to eventually go back to attack. She gotta win two of the following three rounds. But we don't have to go the entire distance. We can win in regulation as TSM is only on four rounds, not on six. I mean, this is exactly where you want to be if you're BDS. Yes, TSM took the first half, Nick, by a score of 4-2, to two, but 4 twos tend to be the most common splits that we see, especially when teams are proficient on a map and they have the side working in their favor. When I say that last part, the side working in their favor, what I mean is that Oregon does like the defense and the defenders do does. like Oregon. That's the way it works. And upstairs, Dorm's defense from BDS using a lot of the same operators that were trotted out by TSM. But one of the key differences is that there's an alibi in play. Should bode well for BDS. What doesn't bode well for them is that it sounded like a Gon 6 took out that Goyo shield. And with it went 70% of Ren Shiro's HP. All of this in the first 30 seconds. If that's the case and all it took was a single Gon 6, it's a pretty good use of utility. Yeah, it is. There's no Jaeger being used from BDS. And I, I just assumed that there was no Magnet being used from Shaiko either of course the magnets they regenerate throughout the round so you don't have that many in the beginning normally you would see the Wamai played with the Jaeger but in this simple instance it's just the Wamai from Shaiko of course leaving those shields a bit vulnerable and Renshiro kind of paid the price he absolutely did and there's a deep flank going through the bottom of this map that's Rafal to do that Merc was aware of this, or at least had some sort of premonition that there was an off-site player. Maybe he got droned out, I'm not entirely certain. A drone seems to scoop by Alems, who's not visible for the moment. He's on freezer stairs. So that's two players from BDS now who are down below. And when I say down below, I mean the basement. They're very disconnected. Oh, off-site, but a nice toss from the nade from Bolo takes out Alems. That's a pretty decent start to this first half. That is an absolute throw and a half. I mean, that nade basically went into the face of a Lems. There wasn't anything you could do. He couldn't run away. He was perfectly cooked as well. Now, 
that means man advantage once again for TSM. Remember, it's a kid storm defense, so that means that TSM has to get upstairs if they want to contest the bomb side. Downstairs is not all they need. Achieved is in such a powerful position. If you can pick off or isolate the last roamer of BDS, that means that the remaining three players are all on the site. And because of that, you keep Sledge inside a mess. He can watch the hatch up into dorms. He's got a grenade or two as well at his disposal. Achieved in this case having both of them. He could just sit there because the numbers advantage favors TSM that you don't need to dedicate another player to flank watch at an even 5-5. Five, five. The return, by the way, that we saw from Rafal was coming by the back of the tower, but Merc doesn't care about that anymore. There's a job to be done, and with 40 seconds left, that's TSM to do it. Breed is still above, waiting by the rotation hole very patiently. Could there be a swing in? Will there be some pressure from Matt? He doesn't really know, but he loses some of the coverage in the soft wall next to him. A bladed magnet tossed by Shiko. I don't know if it was intended to go into the actual room, but it gets caught on the door frame. Merc taking some damage in the process. Shiko deciding to aggress on white stairs. Nobody there. Firing away. His position given. Playing off of the big window. Where are they and where can they come from? Rafal the first kill from BDS. TSM taking their time, but like that, they figured things out. Two kills on their own, but with one second left, Geo needs to get the diffuser down. There it goes. Rafal the only one to stop it in its tracks, one second left. He'll creep up to the bomb site. He has some pings shooting through the wall. Down goes the Zolf of Merc. But with Rafal playing back to back on that deployable shield and 35 seconds to go, there are three kills from TSM to be had on Rafal's side. Walking through Kid's dorm, swinging onto Bolo, but Bolo stalwart at the top of White Stairs. The very first round of TSM's attack goes to them and BDS unable to have a winning effort on their first defense. That didn't even look like that was going to be a TSM round victory. Geo quite literally started planting on this zero second mark. Achieved was still down below. Right before the plan started, he got a nade kill vertically and oh my, I thought that was BSS gonna run around with the round based off time alone. BDS themselves, they didn't really aggress into TSM. I thought they as well thought that they didn't have to do much that round because time was just on their favor, but but Geo, doing great support duty right now, utilizing each and every single second possible and saying, you know what, all we need is to plant at the very last second and just not die while planting and we'll still win the round. Beautifully calculated, if you'll call it that. <laughs> that nade from Bolo as well started things Shit. off and then he held the same spot by the white stairs to get that very final kill. Well done by TSM, and in particular, Geo to me is the savior of that round. Certainly. Because as you said, on the one second mark, he started to plant the diffuser, and that was the perfect time for it to come. Unlike other games, when you need to have the diffuser planted, or the bomb planted, or the case planted, or whatever they use, in Rainbow Six, you can start planting when there's one second left. Even though it takes seven seconds to plant the diffuser, you can extend the round by six, seven seconds to get that objective planted. Overtime, if you will. Exactly. A little bit of overtime. Extra time, if you want to call it that, for the Europeans in the chat. And Geo, I don't know if that was bad coordination. I don't know if TSM had good wherewithal fall as to the location of the defenders, but the hesitation almost costed TSM the round, despite the fact that they had eliminated three players on the side of BDS. So kudos to Geo or whoever on the team picked up on it, because that level of clock management, while seemingly poor, still ultimately worked out in the end. Yeah, I mean, we have a great French team in BDS, and we used to have a great French team in Vitality back in the day, known as the last 15 second team, where they would basically start planning at the very last second each and every round, and they made the argument that the later you plan in the round, the more time efficient you are, because you're taking each and every second possible to ensure that you get to that late stage and you get to plant, and basically making sure that everything is 110% covered the way you want it to be. Rafael, looking to get active. He has refrag ability. He has a friend behind him in Lems. So if anybody from TSM strikes down this staircase, there'll be two players awaiting them. Geo holds onto that diffuser right now inside of classroom using his ex-Kairos to open up the hatches. That's the front hatch to go first. And that's also the security hatch opened up. Such a distinct sound of the x Kairos launcher. All three main hatches that you want to sit on as an attacker have all been opened up now, including the one inside of Lobby. 
So, are inside a meeting and inside a lobby. So good control for TSM. They're doing all right. BDS doesn't really need to extend too much here, but Alems decides to swing. He baits out the drone. Bolo tries to capitalize off of it, but a shotgun is a superior weapon at that range. And Alems sacrifices 30 HP for a kill onto one of the top performers for TSM. He even had an ADS, so even if TSM throws a flashbang or a grenade, this time around it won't work. But the Chief, he takes down Renshi, doesn't need to do that, does that with a headshot instead. Smoke is still upright though, so there's long-term denial with 50 seconds left. Those two toxic canisters from Breed A can blanket any of the entry points. Whether you want to stitch them together or use them to cover two separate ways into the bomb site is up to you and the rest of the team. TSM will patrol the hatches now. Execute coming out any second, waiting for a drop, but let's stun them first and see. Netted by a magnet, bouncing off of the door frame, and now Merc will just utility dump on down before dropping. It looks like he might be completely out of his utility and not wanting to take a fall. Shaiko with a kill onto Achieved. Alem's taken out by Geo. Chala one as well. Magnet's still working to grab these throwables. Shaiko will fall off this position. He and Bride will need to be the ones to work the bomb site. And Bride, a beautiful shot with the toxic canister tossed out as well. Merc is there. And with Geo at his side, it'll be Bride to stop it. And he gets both of them. He is so good, so clutch. And with that SMG 11, he can accomplish just about anything. Anything. A miscalculation by TSM to stack up together, and as they run into the bomb site, despite a spirited effort in the final 20 seconds, they fall short, and it's the round for BDS. I'm curious if Bide even saw the second guy from TSM. It looked like one body, but it was in fact two. I will say though, when TSM had the execute come out, Merc was on that meeting hatch and he fake dropped, and it made BDS wonder, did he drop for real or was it a fake? And it actually worked out into TSM's favor. They got the openings, they got the kills, but then we all know what happens next. Bride, the absolute cl clutch god SMG legend. Almost no one can do it as good or better than he can. And that is going to keep BDS inside of this game. They basically elude TSM from getting the match point which also would be serious point, for that matter. It would be. And it would not necessarily spell doom and gloom for BDS, but would put them in a very tenuous position moving forward. Because BDS only have one more match to play. They've had all their games front-loaded, so their schedule is drawing to a close. That's unideal, because you can't really make up for lost time. That's just the way the scheduling works, and it's been an unfortunate set of circumstances for BDS. But the good news is that at least BDS kept it close. It came down to the final gunfight with one player left. TSM very easily could have pulled that off. They did not know where Bride was, which is why both players decided to go down the hallway and then try to run into the site side by side. The problem being, they had just gone for a default plant spot. There's nothing Bride could have done because there was a cabinet in his way, there was shelving in his way, there's a bomb chassis in his way, and Bride would have needed to swung with even one player from TSM holding that doorway while the plant going down Bride needs to engage in two 1v1s, which is a significantly tougher thing to do. Absolutely, and TSM, I mean, we can talk about their time efficiency, right? On the first attack, it was an absolute last second they started planting. On the round we just saw, they were running down that hole with what I believe was eight seconds left. So had they managed their time a little bit better, you could argue that they could have taken their time, try to drone out or figure out where Bride was sitting. But because their time management isn't the greatest right now, they had to just run it down the hallway and pray for the best. And that's not enough against the likes of BDS, it is not enough against the likes of Bride because they will abuse that fact against you each and every single time and once you give BDS too much space, that's where it gets kind of scary. Now, no Jaeger on the board again, it's just the magnets from Shaiko, so these shields are not protected that well and TSM, they have so many flashbangs, they have so many grenades, these shields will fall. Kabolo just waiting for the call to be made, x Kairos go off. One of the Kona stations giving Shaiko a little bit extra HP. These Kona stations will be particularly crucial against the grenades that have been getting tossed in by TSM. Because if you're even on the outer rim of where that grenade's gonna blow up, that extra HP provided by Thunderbird's gadget could be enough to keep you alive. Oh, well. 
you saw something very really puzzling I there, by the way. No, I was. Sorry, I, the drone came towards Bola. I thought it was like a mossy drone or something because uh, Rafal is playing the mossy, but it wasn't. Anyway, the breach kind of got uh, messed up a little bit from CSM here. It isn't walkable through. It's only going to be an angle that is not going to bode well for TSM because they need a way in. But a chief, he finds Renshi. He's now 2 and 7 down on the ground, but of course, his Goya shields will still help his teammates from the grave. Shaiko is yet to get online. Final minute of play now. And Ooh. there you go. A third kill for Shaiko. Half his HP gone in the process, but still a very worthwhile trade. And that's Bolo as well, who's down for the count. Merc is the next one up to take a ton of damage. Playing inside of Attic, watching that hatch. Alems now wanders away. Because both Shaiko and Alems are below on HP, the Kona stations will be their best friend. Three kills in a row for BDS, by the way, and that leaves Geo holding the bag, quite literally, inside a trophy, but it's just going to be a participation trophy, no victory. An all but certain round for BDS, as Geo now flashes himself <laughs> and gets finished off by none other than Shaiko, who I believe finishes the round with three kills. BDS warming up, and again, proving that Oregon is a defender-sided map. They have done a much better job on this side than on attack, and BDS are one round away from tying it up with TSM. I will say, the BDS we've seen the last two rounds in particular have looked really sharp. They're now hitting shots, they're really getting on the board, and that's exactly what we're used to seeing from them. So let's just call Bank the bomb up map, shall we? And now <laughs> the real map begins. It's 5-4, we're in Oregon, BDS just recently got on the defensive side, and they've been looking really clean ever since. Tertiary bomb side of meeting Hall Kitchen is where we'll go again. Defenders, this will be the first time for BDS to defend it, but TSM, they tried it twice. They won it both times on defense, or won it once on defense, by the way. Lost it the second time. That was the second flawless round from BDS to come out. BDS's two flawless victories on attack occurring on both dorms and meeting. This time around, TSM, well, they're going to try to do their best impression of BDS and get a flawless round, too. This lineup from BDS is very strongly favored. This has been a very Goyo-heavy Oregon thus far. Ditto with Aruni and Mute. Those are very common operators. BDS also preferring the Wamai with Shaiko once again getting those three kills in the previous round, finally getting online. But Jaeger has been shunned by this team. Yeah, it's not something you typically see, but I mean, if it works, why change it, right? I guess the Magnus are doing their job because TSM, I said it, they had the flashbangs, they had the nades, but they did not cleared the shield, they did not go down below, and most importantly, Geo kind of fumbled the breach in that master breach, or master generator wall, that meant that they only had the doorways to walk through. That's not good enough, TSM. The one big thing for BDS is that this is a very competitive group, so if they can at least push it to a third map, then they will tie Dark Zero in terms of points and be a single point behind Elevate. That's just getting to the next map, not including a victory. So these are where the standards are going to be set. BDS will play for a full win, but at minimum, if they can conquer Oregon, they'll be in better place moving forward. One minute off of the clock now as BDS holding on to this meeting bomb site, have done exactly what we see teams do all the time, which is play upstairs inside of dorms, hold control of Attic. And while they're running very similar operators, it's a different setup than from what we saw when TSM went on to this bomb site. Yeah, it is. But uh, the difference is this time around that Shaiko, he's not gonna have to run in through a door and find two players, but a cheat finds one, and Lem's just off the board. That's unfortunate for BDS. They were looking so good, and now, well, they're down a player, they can still do it, but it's going to be a bit more difficult Rafael doesn't have much help besides... Oh, I, I take that back. Renshi's right behind him. C4 might go over. They got a yellow ping, so they have some sort of idea what's going on. But TSM are now slowing down, trying to figure out what's the right approach here. Where exactly are the members of DDS? But there they are. There's two at once. That's too many. And damage being done to Rafael. Merc doesn't want to do anything more than that. Waiting to see if the Nitro Cell will get tossed on out. It does. It does not connect, though, and Rafael will get stunned. So TSM has information that there's somebody there. Bolo cooking the nade. It gets tossed on up, but it seems like it went off a little bit too early. That's good news and a saving grace for BDS. Rafal still on the ground. Shaiko for insurance, but he gets picked apart by Merc. Merc still in that position. He has not been removed. All the while, this contest that's occurring is on that top floor. TSM, once they get these kills, should they get these kills, will then need to drop to the main bomb site. Oh, Renshiro God. gets dropped. The Bolo blows up the shield. Rafal gets downed, and Renshi will walk away with just a sliver of HP. Bride heading back to the bomb site as well as TSM find themselves with a 4v2 advantage. 
Absolutely, 35 seconds in the range here on a sliver of hell with Breeday as his support, but that's not going to be enough, I don't think, unless they start finding some kills. There's absolutely no map control for BDS inside of Kitchen. They only have meeting in control. Once TSM figures this out, they can start walking on in. BDS, what can you do? No C4s, almost no health. Has to juke the nade. He does so efficiently, but now Charla's planting long range coming through when Shio doesn't hit the shot. TSM, in fact, doesn't even give them a fight. But the last two kills from Chieftain Bolo, they finish off the round and that now means match point series point nick Matt or tsm map point match point series point. all the points all of the points as they call it god every cast right here it's championship points everything ah, we got it all i mean some people even claim that they're world champions when they win the pro league final isn't that ridiculous at them next time. Uh, that's my bad. That's my bad. I shouldn't say that. My bad. I'd like to remind you that if you are watching this broadcast, there are only one... There's oh, Sorry. There are only a select few amount of players in the world who can call themselves world champions. True. And the only way that you can call yourself a world champion in Rainbow Six Siege is if you have won the Six Invitational. True. Have you won something else? Cool. Have you won the Six Invitational? <laughs> no? Defenders You're not a world bomb. champion. It's pretty... It's, it's simple calculus is what it is. You plus... SI win equals world <laughs> champion. You plus any other win equals not world champion. I'm glad you followed along. I will be doing uh, I will be doing mathematics and equations for the remainder of the day. If you'd like to connect with me, feel free to do so on social media. I will be happy to tell you that you are also not a world champion. Wow, that is a statement, Parker. And you know what? I feel like Merck himself is also putting out a statement. Not only is he now IGLing for TSM, that was one of those changes they made going into SI, as well as changing the roles between some of the players, namely putting Geo back on that hard support role. And so far, it's been working really great. Merck not only IGLing this round, but also kind of showing that significant operator of his that he's been showing at Invitationals, the Ying. It was a six pick. BDS doesn't know it's coming, but this time, Rafael, he brought out the Jaeger, and that is the perfect perfect opportunity, the perfect time for this to happen, and even though it might have been a guess, I'll say, good job on you. Laundry is the bomb site that BDS will go to, and hopefully continue the trend line of staying alive. Yeah, we're gonna be sitting around waiting, of course. TSM can't just run straight through. They have to clear out the map, figure out where to go next, and BDS not moving too much themselves. They are very comfortable with their position because they have the Jaeger and the Wamai. They got Barbwire on the big tower stairs, so now it's all on TSM to make the first moves. But when you got the Ying on your side, you can be very happy with BDS playing passive because you got a really execution-based operator that'll break right through that round. And execution was the name of the game for TSM. If you recall, it was TSM who hit the final hurdle before the finish line and face planted on the previous attempt at this bomb site. Bride picked up the two piece playing in closet when both of the remaining TSM players surged into the site with just a second left. And that is frankly just a bad stroke of luck. A misplay by TSM, but a bad stroke of luck on their part. And Bride is very thankful for the fact that TSM misplayed the situation. The rest of the round, though, for TSM was quite sound structure-wise. They were able to take map control on the top floor very quickly, open up the hatches quite quickly, and even though they engaged on the bottom floor and they lost Bolo early, they then picked off the remaining players, isolated Shaiko by a pillar, and grabbed the back part of the bomb site. The problem was is that it took too much time, and that's why they rushed in and got gunned down by breeding. How was their clock management here? Well, it doesn't seem to be that much better, and history is repeating itself with Alems taking up Bolo, not in the same spot, mind you, but with Bolo down for the count, things will be significantly tougher. There's a Candela in the hand, three of them in fact, for Merc, charging it up, and he'll go for a drop, trying to bait it out, the sound going over and over and over again. 45 seconds for them to go. Shaiko swinging towards blue. Renshiro far enough back on pillar, but spotted on a drone. A grenade goes in, and there's the blind, and rushing in his Merc, but he can't hit the broad side of a barn. Renshiro can, though, and all of BDS can. It's Geo in a 1v5. So things go from bad to worse, and BDS will stave off match point for at least one round. Cool your heels, cool your jets. Wow. That might end up coming back to haunt them, by the way. That allowed Breedy to get that two-piece to finish off the round. That structure-wise, TSM looked like the better team that round, and I stand by that. Obviously, they did not learn from it. It was BDS who seemed to be the better student. And then on round number 11, 
takes the mistakes that they made, learn from them, and they flawlessly handle TSM. As you pointed out, their third flawless round of this series, and the third flawless round of this map. So, kudos to BDS for pulling that off. It's a dorm's defense now for BDS upstairs, and the last time they went here, they were successful. The time before that, they were not. And that was the round where, in many ways, I would argue that BDS were the better team, trying to force TSM to get a plant down at the last second. Now, Geo did it, and the coverage while the plant was going down was strong. But still, it really comes down to a coin flip at 50 seconds, or, or one second, rather, as to whether or not you're going to see Geo get that diffuser planted successfully. So while TSM wins rounds that they don't have a business in winning, BDS does the same thing. You now have a one round chance as BDS to propel these teams into overtime. And if it goes to OT, I have to say that the momentum will at that point be in BDS's hands and they will have a better chance of pushing us to Villa than the other way around. Wait. Now, I don't know exactly where Rafal was getting shot. Grappled in. Oh, okay. That is not the ideal start for BDS that they wanted. The timeout for TSM seemingly working in regards to the way that TSM take map control. That's extremely odd. I don't think I heard the grapple in, nor did Rafael. But the thing is, it is a passive gadget. Rafael brought out the Jaeger ADSs combined with the Magnets. So even though he died, it's again, it's a passive gadget. They've been put down on the ground. The value will still be had. But that means BDS now on match point has to play a five versus four. And Merc getting a great injury for his team. Oh, and oh. she follows up a Lemish off as well. Now, Shaiko, Bride, Renshi, where are you? You need to step up right then and right now, otherwise it's over. This is something that you can't really prep for in terms of a timeout. You don't know the way that the defense is going to be playing, so you have to drone them out and pinch them. Both of the incursions so far coming inside of meeting and towards the back of the map by tower. This gives TSM so much breathing room and a ton of time as well. The first 90 seconds are just about done. So with half of the round still to go, BDS will sit there, and these 90 seconds are going to feel like an absolute eternity. That they are, Shiger trying to find the killer, and that's exactly what they need to be doing, because playing this 5 versus 3 isn't going to work, because TSM can just flock the bomb side. They have so many more guns, so many more bodies. Renshi, Bride, Shaiko, the trio right here, they are so capable, and they gotta show us right now, backs against the wall, that they have what it takes. But a Chief says no, the net comes out, now leaving just two players left from BDS. Can they do it? Oh, another grenade! Bride, if there ever was a time to be here, it's now, but no! It's a flawless round for TSM as they end out the series. They take it two to zero. And honestly, yes, Rafael just came through. They haven't had much practice. They haven't played at imitations with him yet. They play with Bios. Bang was basically a warm up. Unfortunately, it took too long to get back into it on Oregon, and we never got to see Villa. GTVP, we see Gotcha from TSM actually, he's there with the boys. He is, he was tweeting about it earlier on, he's joined the team. We don't know in what official capacity, I don't believe it's been talked about by the org, but TSM spoils Rafal's homecoming, and this puts BDS in 